On Studio 865 today, my guest is the one and only Mick Harrison. How you doing, Mick? I'm doing good. I got, well, first question I have is, uh, well, I was over at my parents the other night, and they said, who's coming up on 865? And I said, uh, Mike Harrison. And my mom looked at me and goes, isn't it Mick? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah. 80-year-old yeah. mom's uh, on top uh, of it. Shoot, I, I guess that, you know, I guess it worked, man. I got yeah. people talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 how did the name Mick come about? Um, on your birth certificate, I don't think it says Mick. No, my mother calls me Michael. But Michael, that's yeah, the first I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's not downright dignified. It's not well known. Well, I'm, I'm going to wait until I get older and use that. All right, yeah. Uh, well, actually, one of Jeff Bill, you've heard of Jeff Bills before. I've heard I'm of sure. Jeff Bills. Yeah, one of his friends uh, kind of dubbed me that because uh, I, I, you know, I used to send like uh, just songs I've been working on back in West Tennessee. I send little cassette tapes to him and. Uh, so I thought it'd be cute just to write, like, Mike, M-I-C, you know, like on the little tape recorders. Right. And uh, next thing I know, I come up here, and I'm Mick all over the place. I don't know how that happened, but uh, I think Todd, Todd Eaton, I think maybe he came up with that, and so it just stuck. Yeah. For the most part. I mean, you know, people still call me Mike, too. But. So it's short for microphone. That's what it was supposed to be to okay. begin with, but, you know, ah, who knows. And it sounds British. Like, it, like, there must be a thousand British guitar players named Mick and... And of course, the guy in the Stones. Yeah, yeah, that guy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that, that sounds a lot cooler than Mike, personally. I mean, no offense to any Mikes out there, but I'm one too. So, yeah. uh, and eventually a Michael once you once you go to court. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> once I put a tie on. All right. Well, let's let's not rush into that. Uh, okay. Let me ask you. You've you've got several records out, and you've got a new one coming out called called On the Right Side of the Grass. On the Right Side of the Grass. Now that sounds like a, like a purist bluegrass title, but I have a feeling that it's not. No, it's not. I mean, we love bluegrass and everything. That was one of the things I was afraid of. It's like you know, people going, "Hey, new bluegrass band, all right." But uh, no, it was more of a. It was more of a. We're not dead yet, basically. <laughs> we're on the top side, not the other side of it. You know, just one of those deals. We're still kicking. Right. And uh, actually, I think Brad, our drummer Brad Henderson, I think he got it from some old timer. Out in Sevier County somewhere, so it's a good it's a good title. And who else is in the band? Uh, well, Brad Henderson plays drums. Uh, Vance Hillert is the bass player, the exotic hillbilly we like to call him. And uh, Robbie Trosper is the guitar player slash producer slash guru. Uh, and me. Yeah. And what's an exotic hillbilly? <laughs> what what uh, constitutes being an exotic hillbilly? Oh man, I don't know if I ought to tell. Should we that sell, say that on, on TV or well, not? Well, it's nothing dirty, I don't guess. Uh, oh, that's a shame. Well, yeah, I mean, it could be if I went into all the details, but uh, <laughs> uh, well, Vance got it from uh, some girl dubbed in that. The girl's from uh, I think Sweden. Yeah, and uh, she hung out with him for a weekend on tour somewhere. I won't say. Vance is not married or anything, so I can tell this. Uh, and uh, she told uh, one of her friends that got back to us, she's like, I like Vance so much because he's so exotic. <laughs> you know, that's really weird because, uh, like, I grew, up, I grew up in East Tennessee. You grew up in West Tennessee. We yeah, got the state We covered. got it covered. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I never considered myself exotic, but it was weird when the first time I went to Europe and all of a sudden I was more exotic than people from other parts of the United States. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, you're from, this, oh, you're from Tennessee. That's yeah. really exotic. I said, it is. <laughs> yeah. What, y'all? I started wearing, like, uh, you know, a paisley coat or something at that point. No, they seem to, uh, I mean, when we were over in England, they, they seemed to like the southern folks. Yeah. That's nice to hear. Yeah. And so on Right Side of the Grass, you've got a lot of new songs. Um, I really like the song Sawdust. Tell me, tell me about that one. Uh, well, Sawdust... It's what I used to have in my pocket, which is one of the lines, because uh, back in West Tennessee, I worked with my dad at a sawmill. And, uh, you know, West Tennessee, I love it to death, but I, I wouldn't want to live there again. Uh, and, you know, it's just, just a song about, you know, working all your life and not being able to go out and do what you want to do. Yeah. And uh, ended up with just a pocket full of sawdust, which, like I say, I ended up with a hell of a, I think I still got some. I'm not sure. <laughs> you can check. <laughs> you got the... Got a machine that that knows it. Sawdust meter. Sawdust meter. Awesome. By the age of 18, he burned out those dreams. Put a man in a meal with small shoulders. What you were won't be state champs 83. But now you be the best man stacking lumber. All you got is a pocket. Full of sawdust. All you got 
It's a pocket full of salt From the old ones you learn The best route to turn Next thing you know you pulled over Five years go by Then the next 25 I didn't boots enough To hold you All you've got Is a pocket Full of salt dust All you've got Is a pocket Full of salt Just like your dad never knew what you had But one day old age creeps up on you Time moves so fast A missed second chance To take these old pants and start it over All you've got All you've got It's a pocket Full of salt dust All you've got It's a pocket Full of salt dust How long did it take you to come up with that one? Have you been working on it your whole life, or did, was something knocked out in a couple of, couple of hours? Well, it's been working on me my whole life. <laughs> so, no, it, it kind of came around pretty quick. Um, you know, I, I just started playing that rhythm, really. It's kind of what got it going. Uh, and I think I just talked to my dad, too. And that really got it going. Yeah. You know, it's like, what are you doing? I'm not logging. I've been sawing. It's like, bam. It didn't take much after that. It's yeah. like, it just kind of fell in line. Uh, yeah, that's that's one of my favorite songs, definitely on the record. So, so how did you go from uh, being out working in a sawmill in West Tennessee to being in a rock band in Knoxville? Uh, well, once again, Mr. Jeff Bills. I mean, I, he's, he's, he's the Jeff Bills show. For a lot of, <laughs> he's responsible for a lot of things that have happened on Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, no, you know the old band, the old Viceroys, which yep. you know of a little bit. Uh, when John Paul Keith uh, decided to move on to other things, uh, Jeff and Scott got together and decided, you know, hey, we need another, instead of a hotshot guitar player, we want somebody that writes. So uh, Jeff gave me a call and was like, well, I'm not really doing anything other than cutting these trees up. Uh, so yeah, I'll come on down and try it out. And Let that, me finish cutting these trees first. Yeah, yeah. You didn't leave the trees half cut. No, no, that'd be wasteful. Yeah, okay, good. Are you environmental? Kinda, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I could tell that from that. Answer. <laughs> and what did you think about Knoxville when you got here? I mean, did you did you ever, at, at any point go, uh oh, or what am I doing? No, no, because I'd been coming up for a while just visiting, you know, and because uh, I think uh, I had some friends who went to school up here, uh, so I always loved it, you know, just coming up and visiting. Moving up here was great. I mean, I'll never go back to West Tennessee. I mean, and permanently anyway. So the only thing I noticed was like. It was weird. It was like the newscasters were different. Well, well why were they different? I mean, I, I don't know if they were cooler. It was just like watching news was weird for the first couple of weeks. And I know that's a weird thing to say. And the no, water, they, you know, it's like drinking water at a different place. It tastes funny. Yeah. The news people were different. Well, that's weird because I feel when, when I go to Atlanta or somewhere and I watch the news, I'm like, yeah, these aren't the, these aren't yeah. the same people. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Ted Hall. Oh, yeah, Ted. I guess technically he's done both. Yeah, he's, he's, he's down there still, isn't he? Yeah, he's still in Atlanta. Uh, speaking of the V-Roys and the Viceroys, 
Sooner or Later is one of your, your top songs from that era. Tell me about that tune. Where did it come from and how did it evolve? Uh, well, actually, that one, uh, I wrote it before I was in uh, the V-Roy's. Uh, that was one of those little cassettes I was telling you about I sent up, and the next thing I know, the Viceroy's are uh, covering it, uh, which was cool. I actually got to hear them do it. Were they paying you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah. were paying me in beverages and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so when, when John Paul you know, moved on, uh, that was an obvious, let's do that song. It was one of the first ones they let me sing. But, yeah, that was just one, you know, sitting in the bedroom in West Tennessee. I don't even really know where it came from. They just kind of, like, swooped in and kicked me in the face. Sooner or later I'll find you out But you don't think I can know how the Famous words of a certain doubt Sooner or later I'll figure you out But you don't think I can Just to wait and see Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later I don't know I spend my time Trying to rearrange a messed up mind Take those keys and unlock these cuffs Cause enough is enough is enough for out You don't think I can Just to wait I see Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later And if I drive away from this town There won't be no way you can track me down Just you wait and see Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later I get off my knees Sooner or later I get off of my knees Sooner or later I get off of my knees Like I say, v Royce tucked that up and it was just like calling me already. So, that was sweet. That's, that's really a great, it's, it's like a great radio song, I think. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know what radio does anymore, like a pop radio, but... Like you said, is there radio still? There is. <laughs> WUOT, for example, would be a station that uh, will be playing it soon. And when you started working with the the, the Viceroys, the V-Roys, you, you worked with Scott Miller, obviously, who's been on the show, and Steve Earle was your producer. Yep. What 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 was it like working with Steve Earle, and, and did he rub off on you in any way, <laughs> negative or positive? Uh, <laughs> no, I mean... Really, I mean, getting an opportunity to work with him was like totally awesome. I mean, it was great. I mean, he really helped us out a lot. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I, actually, before I met him, I was a big fan. I, I'm still a big fan of some of his songs. Uh, but uh, like I say, he helped us out in the beginning a whole lot, and then later on, he kind of like wanted to get his hands a little bit too much in it. Uh, and I probably shouldn't even been talking about this, but I don't care. Uh, you know, and he just kind of like. Uh, Rub me the wrong way, I'd say, <laughs> toward the end of the end of the V-Roy's. Right. I mean, but he's great. I mean, you know, he's a great songwriter, knows a lot of stuff, probably knows less than what he thinks he knows. But, uh, uh, you know, it was a great experience. Did, did he in any way, like, try to shape the songs, or were the songs pretty much finished when, they, when, when he got to them? Uh, well, like on the first record, they were totally done. Everything was great. You know, he came up here for like pre-production, set in the basement. 
I was like, you know, it didn't change a thing on those, really. Uh, Sat in the basement? Yeah, at, on Holland House. You lived in a basement? Well, well you we practiced, practiced in, in a basement, basement yeah. Okay. Yeah. I lived there pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Well, Holland House, you know, you know uh, you've been there. I you've believe, been there. I've been to the porch. Yeah, okay. All right. But yeah, so he came to that, that and uh, did our pre-production thing, just listen, see what we need to do. Didn't change a thing on the first record. Second record, write the opposite. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. I mean, you know, we didn't have as much time to write the second record, obviously, as we did the first one. Uh, had some good suggestions, but kind of got a little bit, you know, there's actually some songs that I wish we'd have put on the record that got... Schnipped. Do you remember which ones? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. I can almost hum them, but you have to give me a minute. All right. We'll give you a harmonica later. And we can... <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'm known for playing a harmonica. Yeah. Well, everybody should be. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think he really helped us. Uh, at least, get, you know, he took us to England. Yeah. So we got to do that and took us West Coast and, you know, pretty much all over the U.S. So, you know, we got a, we got a little bit of leg up. How did you go over in England? We flew. <laughs> <laughs> and once you got there, how did people uh, how did people respond uh, to, to to you and your bandmates? Uh, well, like the, the the Irish folks, I love the Irish. I love the Irish. Uh, they were awesome. You know, we get through with a, a set, and you know they're just going crazy. Uh, and the Scottish, same way, but uh, the English were a little more reserved. Yeah, I guess that's their thing. You know, we get through with a set or after a song or whatever. Yeah. It's like you know, posh, 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 whatever. Uh, but I mean, they still we sold a lot of merch. They seem I, to. Like I think, us. yeah, I think they like it. The English like it just as much as the Irish. They just respond in a different yeah. way. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. But it's it's interesting because I I played England and Scotland on a back to back thing, and and uh, there's also I think a drinking factor involved in there. I thought that, that it. the Scottish <laughs> drank more than the English. That may have a lot to do with. It. Which brings me to a question about another song, "Never Gonna Drink Again." Today. <laughs> Today. Okay. Well that, well, that makes it a little more clear. Uh, where did this one come from? <laughs> or where did it end up? <laughs> oh, pretty much. I mean, well, ending up, I don't know yet. Uh, you've told that to your wife before, surely, hadn't you? Um, not today. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen her. Well, yeah. or, or not even told anybody, but right. just had those days there were there were times where i would wake up the next day and go well that's 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 the end of that hobby okay that's what i was about to say okay. I was, even if you didn't maybe you know somebody you no, it happened yeah, that's it i'm never drinking again well i rolled in at 2 a.m i tried to cover up my tracks slipped out of them cowboy boots slid out of them slacks quiet as a graveyard i didn't move from where i laid when I wake in the morning, this is what I'll say. Well, I'm never gonna drink again, my darling. Well, I'm never gonna drink in the same way. Well, I'm never gonna drink again, sweet honey. Well, I'm never gonna drink again today. Well, Sunday don't come easy in the early afternoon When you gotta plant begonias and do that in honeydew And whiskey makes it harder to get through the next day And when she smells that honky-tonk, this is what I'll say Well, I'm never gonna drink again, my darling well, I'm never gonna drink in the same way Well, I'm never gonna drink again, sweet honey Well, I'm never gonna drink again today I got stuck at the bar But I didn't have to pay I won't mold myself till 1 a.m. I could have called, but it got too late when I shut down the bar, I came home right away. I better get it straight tonight, tomorrow what I'm gonna say. Well, I'm never gonna drink again, my darling. Well, I'm never gonna drink in the same way. Well, I'm never gonna drink again, sweet honey. Well, I'm never gonna drink again today. 
Well, I'm never gonna drink again, my darling. Well, I'm never gonna drink in the same way. Well, I'm never gonna drink again, sweet honey. Well, I'm never gonna drink again today. You know, we went old school honky tonk kind of thing, and uh, it's pretty much most of those lines are true. I probably said those to to Mandy, <laughs> my wife. So, yeah, it's it's a pretty true song. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things I really love about that song is that, and a lot of your songs, sooner or later, is another example. Um, they sound like instant classics. Like the first time you hear them, they feel in a really great way familiar, like like the song you want to go put on the jukebox immediately. Yet they're new because you, you know, I haven't actually heard this song before, though it feels good. Why do you why do you think you're able to do that? I don't think many people can do that. Well, I, I'm not going to say I'm ripping them off of something, but you know, I guess I am a little bit, or at least you know, the vibe. I'm ripping off the vibe, yeah. the good time vibe. You know, uh, that's the only thing I can think of. I mean, you know, I write my own lyrics to, you know, for what I feel like. Yeah. You know, whatever's going on with me. Uh, Which comes first, the lyrics or the beer? Beer or the music? Pretty much the beer. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm kidding. I don't drink. No. Uh, yeah, this is all just for show. Yeah. The, uh, it, you know, it depends. Sometimes I'll come up with something riding down a road over the mountain off the B-Roy thing. I was driving over a mountain. Yep. Wrote that, then came up with the music later. But a lot of times the music comes up next. So uh, it just depends. And what about the song Crazy Eyes, also from the new record? Uh, Crazy Eyes uh, is definitely about no particular person. Uh, that's good. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, you know, you've had these friends. It's like, Hey, they're all cool. and hanging out with you and having a good time and y'all get along great. And then all of a sudden some crazy person comes into their life and they totally change. I'm the crazy person that comes into the life and, and, and ruins the chemistry of everything. <laughs> you didn't ruin my chemistry. Okay. I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm making that up. You are a crazy person. Though. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very little. He never had a lot of talent, just one thing He'd hold on when a good thing came Well, this world is a struggle, but you know he tried Until he loved on a girl with the crazy eyes Oh, with the pills and a whiskey, Lord, he stayed away he Saved up his money for a brighter day had a lot of friends that he pushed aside Until he loved on a girl with the crazy eyes He can't see her Take his pride He can't feed her Strain his mind Put a ring on a finger this took for love Thought he had a blessing from the Lord above Asked the devil in the mirror could he get a ride I Gave a keys to a girl with the crazy eyes He can't see her Take his pride He can't feel her Strain his mind Rains booze every morning and it snows till dawn. Everything's empty because everything's gone. Travel down a road that was paved with lies. I gave it up to a girl with the crazy eyes. He can't see her. Chick is bright. He can't feed her. Strain his mind Well this world is a struggle But you know he tried When he loved on a girl With the crazy eyes Do 
what do you got lined up for after the record comes out? Well, when's it, when's it coming out, then, then what next? Are you hitting the road? Or are you? Yeah, we're going to hit the road, but the record comes out uh, June 3rd. Um, 2008. Yes, this year. Yes. And um, our CD release show is a few days before, though. We're doing a CD release show uh, at Barley's May 30th yeah. uh, with Glossary from Murphy Sproul is going to open up the show, so that should be cool. But yeah, after that, we're going to hit the road as far as we can go. You know, gas with prices ga are going to yeah. be about $4 a gallon by that it's time. It's weird what the change in gas prices does to a rock band <laughs> and everybody, but in yeah. a rock band in particular, like it makes me, well, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I want to drive there anymore. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I was always, already thinking about like New York and Chicago and different places. And I mean, we'd even, you know, Texas run this time and uh, that's kind of been cut out. It's been kind of like taking a little compass and running around a map and see how <laughs> see how mm -hmm. far around you can go out of the circumference. Well, any anybody gets a chance to go out to see Mick Harrison and the High Score. Yes. It's a fine evening of rock and roll and, yeah. and and jukebox music and oh, you'll have a good and, time and ballads and all that. All right. Well, Mick Harrison, or uh, Michael, as you were seem to be known. <laughs> yeah. Very nice to have you on the show. And thank you, Todd. All right. Thanks a lot. See you in the funny papers. Okay. Studio 865, Mick Harrison is our guest today.